here's one more small thing that goes with factoring and we're going to talk about dividing out these factors. Uh, a lot of people say that you're canceling I kind of understand that you know if I'm if I'm dividing uh, 18 over let's say 36 or something like this I'm going to say uh, and I wanted to cancel here is what everybody calls it I might cancel this 18 with an 18 times 2 down here and reduce that to one half. Well, it's not really canceling anything. Nothing is getting canceled, but everybody always says that. So for the sake of everybody else, I'll say that, but it really you're dividing out is the right term. So what we're going to be doing is dividing out factors. So let's say you had something like this, and you want to start dividing things out. Well, you can't just go willy-nilly through here and cancel things or divide out things that look the same. Like, you can't divide this out, you can't divide out this 9 and this 9. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work any more than this works. You can't say, well, I'm just going to cancel these 6's and that's 1 fourth. Even if it is 1 fourth, it just so happens to be that way. You, you just can't go through here canceling until you have factored first. I'm going to write that over here so you remember that. Factor first. Okay, so the top, how does that factor? Well, you might remember that. I need to make a shell, make an x and an x. Ask myself what multiplies to positive 9 and adds to negative 6. Well, 3 times 3 gives me 9, but that adds to positive 6. So, since I need a negative 6, my two numbers must be negative 3 and negative 3 because negative times a negative will still give me a positive 9, but this will add to negative 6. Alright, let's do the bottom. So this is called a difference subtract of two squares. You'll remember that these are the easiest thing to, to factor. You just do an x minus 3, x plus 3 because of the fact that these two will distribute property or FOIL back to this. These are conjugates so the middle term will go away. The x term, there's no x term here, it'll go away because these are conjugates. And now I can go through here and divide out or cancel. I'll cancel these and I'll be left with this. So the answer to that is x minus 3. You can drop the parentheses at this point if you want or leave it in parentheses, but that's the answer. x minus 3 over x plus 3. Sometimes we get this scenario and you might uh, recognize this from somewhere and you'll say, well, these will cancel. That's true because this can be thought of as in parentheses. All of this can cancel with that. You just can't cancel part of it with that. Okay, so those do cancel, and then I, I'm left with what seems to be nothing up here. I definitely have x plus 3 on the bottom, but it's not a 0 up here. There's an invisible 1 right there. That's one way to remember that this is a 1. Uh, basically, you just need to remember that there's not nothing up here. It's a 1 up here when you've divided this out. See, because x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 is 1. So remember that. If you ever have to uh, cancel and there's nothing left on the top, it's not nothing. It's a 1. Okay, let's say you were asked to graph this. Well, you might notice that something will divide out if I factor the top. So I could rewrite the top in a factored form. And divide out the x minus 3, or cancel the x minus 3. And now I have a new function or a new equation to graph, just y equals x plus 3. And you might say, I can graph that from algebra 1, that's pretty easy, that's just a linear equation, that's true. Let me graph this for you real quick. Okay, so side by side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this one right here, and I'm going to graph this one over here. You might think, well, all I did was factor this and divide out so they should look the same and they do sort of look the same they both look like this slope of 1 through a y-intercept of 3 you will remember that from algebra 1 linear equation they both look the very same except this one has a hole in it 
because x cannot be 3. If x was 3, 3 minus 3 is 0. You can never divide by 0. You can't ever have a 0 in the bottom. So when x equals 3, right here, 3 minus 3 is a bad thing. So right here at x equals 3, which is about right here, there's a hole in that one. And then the graph continues on. There's not a hole in this one. This one is defined for all real numbers. So the graphs of these, if you ever had to divide out, when you divide out, that makes a hole. 